In this video, we'll look at Aurobindo's views on spiritual freedom and individual rights. Aurobindo did not want to focus on narrow Western concepts like individual freedom. He focused on spiritual freedom. Spiritual freedom is the enlightenment of conscience. I repeat, Aurobindo did not want to focus on individual rights and such narrow Western concepts. He wanted to focus on spiritual freedom, which is the enlightenment of conscience. He espoused this in his theory of integral unity, inspired by Neo Vedanta and the Virata Purusha, the presence of the Brahman in all beings. So, he espoused this in his theory of integral unity, inspired by Neo Vedanta and Virata Purusha. The Virata Purusha concept says that the Brahman is present in all beings. So, you have to see three key parts here. One is that uh, uh, in his theory of integral unity, he was inspired by Neo Vedanta and by the concept of Virata Purusha. We have already seen Neo Vedanta in the previous video, where Neo Vedanta is based on the service of all. Virata Purusha means it is the presence of the Brahman in all, th all beings. So, Aurobindo looked at freedom in two ways. First one is freedom for Bharat Mata. The second one is spiritual freedom for the nation and by extension the individual. So, you look at the first one now, freedom for Bharat Mata from the imposed rule of the British. Aurobindo went about advocating a more direct approach towards Swaraj. He wanted people to actively and thoroughly boycott British goods and switch over to Swadeshi goods. So, Aurobindo went about advocating a more direct approach towards Swaraj. He wanted people to actively and thoroughly boycott British goods and switch over to Swadeshi goods. This is also his theory of passive resistance. The second point is spiritual freedom for the nation and by extension the individual. Aurobindo said that freedom can only be achieved through a spiritual renaissance of the country. This spiritual freedom would be based on the service of mankind, the basis of the Neo Vedanta philosophy. I repeat, this spiritual freedom would be based on the service of mankind, the basis of the Neo Vedanta philosophy. Spiritual freedom would lead to the enlightenment of the individual, which would help him realize his abilities. I repeat, spiritual freedom would lead to the enlightenment of the individual which would help him realize his abilities. We will also look at Aurobindo's views on nationalism. Aurobindo's nationalism was focused on the Neo-Vedantic philosophy. It involved a cultural revival of Hinduism to fuel nationalism. We have seen both of these points before that Aurobindo's nationalism was focused on Neo-Vedantic philosophy and it involved a cultural revival of Hinduism to fuel nationalism. This is the reason his brand of nationalism is broadly understood as cultural nationalism or spiritual nationalism. After returning from England, Aurobindo was disappointed with the Indian National Congress's tactics which were largely moderate in the beginning of the 20th century. Aurobindo focused on spiritual nationalism, faith in God and tough actions on ground including the boycott of British goods would lead to Swaraj. So, Aurobindo focused on spiritual nationalism. He said that faith in God and tough actions on ground including the boycott of British goods would lead to Swaraj. Aurobindo said that the strength of a nation depended on the unity of a nation. Aurobindo would bind religion and nationalism together. If you are going to be a nationalist, if you are going to ascend to this religion of nationalism, you must do it in the religious spirit. We will see that even Gandhi adopted such methods that uh, Aurobindo adopted. He would go on do bhajans and he would congregate people together and then he would uh, invoke their nationalistic spirit. Aurobindo was one of the first people to do this on a large scale. So, Aurobindo would bind religion and nationalism together and he says, if you are going to be a nationalist, if you are going to ascend to this religion of nationalism, you must do it in the religious spirit. This idea was to awaken the masses and get the masses to participate in the Swaraj movement. Aurobindo's concept of nationalism would draw inspiration from Bankim Chandra Chatterjee's Bande Matram. 
So it was Bankim Chandra Chatterjee who wrote Bande Matram and Aurobindo's concept of nationalism would draw inspiration from this. Aurobindo would call the Indian nation as Bharat Mata and the citizens of India were the children of Bharat Mata. I repeat, Aurobindo would call the Indian nation as Bharat Mata and all the citizens of India were the children of Bharat Mata. In the words of Aurobindo, for her rejuvenation, India needed Shakti, power that was moral, physical, material and spiritual. I repeat, for her rejuvenation, India needed Shakti, power that was moral, physical, material and spiritual. It was time now that Bharat Mata was freed from the bondages of slavery of the British. Aurobindo was also about caste, creed and class. He advocated the concept of Vasudaiva Kutumbakam, that is, the world is one big family. Aurobindo wanted to open the treasures of spiritualism and Vedanta to the rest of the world to usher in peace and prosperity. So you see that Aurobindo's entire concept revolves around spiritualism and nationalism. Aurobindo wanted to open the treasures of spiritualism and Vedanta to the rest of the world to usher in peace and prosperity. Some leaders like Nehru have accused Aurobindo of unnecessarily combining religion and nationalism. This is in critique of Aurobindo. So Nehru says that Aurobindo unnecessarily combines religion and nationalism, thereby creating a narrative in the line of the Vedantic philosophy and Sanatana Dharma. Nehru preferred a more secular approach where religion and nationalism would be disassociated. However, Aurobindo's writings and his viewpoints were crucial in waking up a slumbering Indian National Congress. Together with the extremist leaders of Lal Bal Pal, Aurobindo would create a surge of nationalism and a culture of sacrifice which would provide motivation for leaders like Bhagat Singh and Chandrasekhar Azad in the years to come. So Aurobindo would provide motivation to leaders like Bhagat Singh and Chandrasekhar Azad through his actions. This concludes this video. We will continue with Aurobindo in the next video. Please watch the video multiple times. Thank you.